we're going to do three problems, and all three of them are going to have uh, different results as far as the number of solutions. So when you do these absolute value problems, it's possible you could have two solutions, one solution, or no solutions. So we're going to take a look, and we'll do an example of each kind of that. So first one, the, this absolute value, no matter what, whenever you have uh, absolute value, it has to be isolated on one side of the equation. So if it's not isolated, that's your first step would be to isolate it. We're going to subtract 15 from both sides. Absolute value x plus 10 is going to equal negative 3. All right, so whatever number you get after the equal sign, that's going to tell you how many solutions you're going to have. If it's a negative number like we have here, automatically it's going to be no solution. Now, the reason why that is is because, remember, absolute values will only give you a positive number as a result. You're talking about a distance between that number and zero. So it's poss impossible to have a negative distance. So even if you were to put, like, for, say, a negative 7 in here, you get absolute value of 3, but the absolute value of 3 is positive 3, not negative 3. So no matter what number is inside here, it's always going to give you a positive result. So whenever you have an absolute value, you have an absolute value of x on the left-hand side and you have a negative number on the right-hand side, automatically no solution. So let's move on to the next case. Okay, so this is another one where we want to isolate the absolute value. So we're going to add 6 to both sides, and we get absolute value of x minus 5 equals 0. So if you get a 0 on the right-hand side, there's only one solution you're going to have. Now, the reason why that is is because normally if I have a, a positive number on this side, I would just set it up and do two different equations, one positive number and one negative number. But in this case, positive 0 and negative 0 is still 0. So I'm only going to have one equation that I'm going to be setting equal to 0 in this case. All right, so this I add 5 to both sides. Add 5 to both sides there, and we get x is equal to 5. And so that's going to be the only solution that we have. You can't do x plus 5, x minus 5 equals 0, and then negative 0. Negative 0 is just 0, so you'll get the same result. So we only have one solution whenever you have an absolute value that's equal to a 0. And now here's the, the last case that you would have. Okay, so 3x minus 1 plus 3 equals 15. So again, we're subtracting the 3 first. Have to do that step to isolate the absolute value. So now, if you've got an absolute value equal to a positive number, you're going to get two solutions. 3x minus 1 equals 12. 3x minus 1 equals negative 12. So we do one positive and one negative. We couldn't do that with the 0 because po negative 0 is just 0. That's why the Previous example only had one solution, but this one's going to have two solutions. Add one to both sides. 3x equals 13. We get x is equal to x equals 13 thirds. This other one, if we add one to both sides, 3x equals negative 11. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x is equal to negative 11 thirds. So you get fraction answers, but again, you have two solutions. So again, just to review that, if you have absolute value equal to a negative number, no solution. If you have an absolute value equal to a zero, it's one solution. And if you have an absolute value that's equal to a positive number, then you're going to have two solutions.